Good morning. Welcome to our TCC Touchpoint. And let's have a word of prayer to start. Father, thank you for your word. We thank you for fellowship. Thank you for life. In Jesus' name. And so we had some stuff come up here, so we're just getting organized. <laughs> Privileged to have Gus here with me today to share the word. And uh, we'll just open our hearts to hear what God would say to us. And just, I would like, you know, to let you know on Sunday, Tim Pomp will be leading worship and having a message for us. So we encourage you to come and join in. We're believing God to move. We're believing the Spirit of God to be uh, manifest among us and to demonstrate his love and speak to hearts. So I just encourage you to come and be here physically present if possible. Otherwise, it will be live streamed. And, you know, so Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock, we have our youth group meeting, 6.30, the Kairos meeting, gathering, seek the Lord time with uh, fellow believers and asking for God to demonstrate himself among us. Hallelujah. And, you know, the early church, and they prayed, and they asked the Lord to stretch forth his hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done in the name of your holy servant or holy child, Jesus. And after they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were gathered, and with great power the apostles went about and demonstrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we'll just turn this over to Gus here and he can share what's on his heart. Well, good morning. God bless you all. I just want to share a, a word from the Word of God this morning to build your faith. Amen. And we just want you to know that God loves you. God is a good God. We are his children. And God, his, the desire of his heart is to bless his people. And we are the people of God. But in order to receive that blessing, we need to get into that place of close communion and fellowship with God where we are more than friends, where we hear his voice. And so in order to do that, we just need to spend time with him. You know, when you go back and read the parable of the sower, you know, we hear the word. And sometimes that word falls on stony ground. We don't receive it. We reject it. We're so busy. Sometimes it falls on thorny ground. And that's even in our lives because we're so tied up with the things of this world. We don't have time for God. And the Bible says that sometimes the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things come and choke the word. And we don't want that to happen in our lives. We need that close fellowship with God so that when we pray, we know that he hears us. Not only does he hear us, but we hear his voice when he speaks to us. That small, still voice within that leads and guides us. Because as a father, God would reach out to us. He would help us. He would strengthen us. He would give us new life in him. He would give us peace and joy. 
and he will because he has promised. But you know, it's the measure that we give of ourselves and our time to spend with him that he will bless us. And so if you're listening today, then that seed of time you sow with God, God will bless. And the blessings of God will be yours in Christ Jesus. God wants to lead us. He wants to guide us. I remember the story of the Passover. When they were, Jesus was ready was going to do the Passover with his disciples. And he told Peter and John, he said, go prepare the Passover. And they said, Lord, but where? And that's a question we have sometimes. Lord, where? Where is it going to happen? Where are you going to bless me? Where should I go? What should I do? And he said, go unto the city. And you will see a man carrying a pitcher. Follow him. And when you get to the house he enters, ask the good men of the house. Tell him, the master, and some versions of the Bible say, teacher. The teacher asks, where will we prepare the Passover? And he'll take you to an upper room. And it was that exactly as, as Jesus said. When they went into the city, they met the man with the picture. And they found that upper room furnished just like Jesus said. And so that's what God wants to do in our lives. He wants to show us the way. But we have to take that step of faith sometimes. Sometimes we have to take that first step before when God will show us the rest. And for them it was going to the city. That was the first step. And then the rest came to pass, just like Jesus said. Second Corinthians, or Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. The word of the Lord says, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them who are perfect toward him. And so God will pick you out of a million people if your heart is perfect and you seek God with your whole heart. God will seek you out. Amen. You know, it isn't like he doesn't have time. He has forgotten about you. He has not. You know, your name is written on the palm of his hand. And so he's seeking those people who have faith to believe. Those people who have that close communion and fellowship with him. Those people who are loyal, faithful, dedicated, devoted, consecrated to God. God wants to demonstrate his power and his kindness. He really does. And in the last few days, you know, we've seen the power of Almighty God, sometimes not in a good way. The other day, uh, I went to Red Lake, a mile from my house, to see if there was a storm coming. And I could see that it was probably raining across the lake. And it's a big lake, so it took a while for the storm to get to me. And I thought, geez, it's going to rain. So I'm done hand today. I'll just go home and relax. But as I drove toward home, it started to pour. And then it started to hail. And the hail kept getting bigger. 
And I looked up and the tail of the tornado was in the trees just ahead of me. And so I drove into the storm. And it was an awesome experience. It was exciting to see the demonstrated power of God on this earth. And it's also a little scary. But God in the midst of that gave me perfect peace. But I thought I've seen enough, you know. As my car was getting plastered with tree leaves and hail, I thought it's time to turn around and go back. <laughs> and I'm glad I did. And after it was all over and I drove home, I thought, I wonder if my house is still there because I only lived a mile away. But thank God the storm had turned. And my house, everything was at peace. And we got that rain that God promised us. And so, just want to tell you this morning that there is only one thing that really matters in this world. And that's that saving grace that we get from the Lord Jesus Christ. That peace that God gives us in the midst of the storm. First Samuel 16, 7 says, Man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And so... God knows what's in your heart. God knows what's in your mind. He reads your thoughts. He reads your mail. He knows where you're at in your walk with him. And God is calling us all to a closer walk. John 14, 23 says, If a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come to him and we will make our abode with him. And so it's not like having a stranger in the house. It should be like living with your best friend. That spirit of God that lives and dwells in us after we receive Christ. We need to fellowship with him. We need to spend time at him with prayer. And really we just need to spend time with him. Time in his word. That word needs to be printed in our hearts, our souls, our minds. We need to meditate on that word. Because it becomes our life. It becomes strength to us. You know, First John says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And so that written Word becomes the power of God in our lives as we read it, as we abide in it, and He in us. You know, God is looking for someone to bless. He's looking for a receiver. And I remember the Super Bowl a few years ago when Kansas City was playing. Kurt Warner was the quarterback. Isaac Bruce was his wide receiver. Both strong Christians in the Lord. And during the game, you know, the quarterback was back to pass the ball. He was looking for a receiver, somebody to catch that ball that he was going to throw. And Isaac Bruce was out there. He was open and he was waiting for it. And you know, he caught it. They won the Super Bowl. And it was a blessing. 
Psalm 84, 11 says, no good thing will be held from them that walk uprightly. So we need to be in that place where we receive the blessings of God. And we can only do that when we walk with him. Amen. And we have to do that in his word. We have to walk in his word. Because when we read about those exciting things that God has done in other people's lives, it increases our faith so that we too can receive the blessings of God in our lives. And we get to that place where we can fellowship, where we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, where he can lead us and guide us and pass of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalm 23. You know, the Bible says that he will prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. He's my pastor. I will not want. I will not want of anything because he goes before me. He prepares the way. He helps me to prosper. He is my protection. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you today for what you're doing in our lives. We just thank you for that power of your Holy Spirit that dwells in us, that gives us strength every morning to face the issues of the day. But to know that you are greater than any circumstance in our lives. Your word says, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. The prophet said, it's not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. So we overcome by the spirit of God, that Holy Spirit that he has given us. And so I just want to close with Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He is slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Amen. Abounding in mercy and loving kindness. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. Hallelujah. So God is a merciful God. God is love. He loves us. And he will teach us to walk in love. Hallelujah. Jesus said a new commandment I give you. To love the Lord God with your whole heart your soul, your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And if we can learn to do that, then we have fulfilled the law. And the mercies of God are belong to us in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so we just thank the Lord today that we walk under a new and a better covenant. where the blessings of God belong to us. They are ours in Christ Jesus. And we accept them and we receive them by faith in that name that is above all names. And Lord, we just thank you for that. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Thank you, Gus. Hallelujah. And you know, the Lord has made it very easy for us to connect with him, to enter into his presence, to experience his love. It's all in the person of Jesus Christ. And if we will receive him and just put all our trust in him, accept the way that he's made for us through death and resurrection, we will come into a living, dynamic relationship with the Father and with Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
And so I, I just encourage you today to draw near to him. It's not hard. Just take a moment, worship him, think about his goodness, focus in on, as Gus was saying, his tender mercies, give thanksgiving to him, and, you know, don't just be focused on the troubles and issues that might be facing you, but just focus in on the Lord for a few minutes and draw near, and there will be refreshing that comes to us from him. Hallelujah. If we do that some every day, we'll grow in our relationship with him. So I just want to, you know, for giving of offerings uh, to TCC, mail them to 10 Strike Community Church, P.O. Box 67, 10 Strike, Minnesota 56683, or give online at 10strikechurch.com. Amen. And so we... Th- Thank, thank you, Gus, for coming and sharing today, and glad you escaped the tornado. <laughs> Amen. So the Lord bless you all, and see you next week. <laughs>